This gentleman played nine seasons in the NFL, eight of those with the Oakland Raiders, who provided one of the most memorable games in a long time. He's known for his versatility, his playmaking ability at the fullback position. Please welcome to Talk Real Football, a guy who's lighting up a cigar in three-time Pro Bowler, Marcel Reese. What's going on, Kay? How are you? Wait, why are we smoking cigars at what time is it where you are? Uh, you know what? When the Raiders win the way they did last night, and Max Crosby sends me a celebratory cigar. It doesn't matter what time it is. It's just winning time. Yeah, Max, I mean, have you, have you talked to anybody from that locker room? Like, was this the craziest thing you've ever seen? What a show, 63 points. I mean, I was talking to those guys in the locker room. I was, like, <laughs> I was just excited for them. They, they were well overdue and earned to have a game like that. I've been a, I've been a part of those games on both sides of them, the, the good side and the, the not so good side. And, and when you're on the right side of those games and everything is hidden and you're, and you're just having fun and everything's going right, it's just a fun time to be a part of football. Um, what was the vibe in the locker room? Cause you were in there. What, who, was go, who was wiling out the most? <laughs> I just think it was a good time as a team. They were celebrating as a team and they were having fun. Obviously, you saw Max in the postgame interview. He was having fun and it leaked out onto the field when he came out there shirtless with a cigar, just being Max, Mad Max. Yeah, well, Mad Max gave you a cigar. I'm very jealous. They score 63 points. They break the Raiders team record of 59 points. That, my friend, was set back in 2010. You, my friend, were a part of that team and scored a touchdown. Was it, be honest now, was there a part of you that hoped they stopped scoring so you could keep your record? Absolutely not. Those are the records you want to be broken, especially when you want to see a team do well. You want those records to be broken. That game that we had at Mile High Stadium well, is already in history. You know, we had our fun. It's their time now. So you want to see those records be broken, and I'm proud of every last one of them. Is this a head coach, Antonio Pierce? Is he a head coach? Yes, he's a head coach. Should he's he a head be, coach. Should he keep the job? He's got this team playing hard. He's put in on quite an impression over the past six weeks. Has he done enough? Will he? Will you think he'll earn that and should earn that coaching gig? I don't know yet, if I'm being honest. You know, uh, when you're when you get a job at a, in an interim position in the middle of the season, it's really hard to evaluate someone. You're not playing with your players. You don't necessarily, you're not even necessarily playing with your coaching staff and uh, you're just working with what you, what you have. I think that the true evaluation will come down the rest of the stretch of this season to see how the players galvanize around him, how they respond after having a big win. How mm -hmm. do you respond after success? How do you respond to adversity? I think there's still some more to be evaluated by Mark Davis and his, uh, his brain trust, but uh, Antonio does have a great foundation. Playing football, um, being a leader in his locker room when he was playing, and it's gonna be interesting to see how it turns out down the stretch. Sure. I mean, there was a lot of talk about when Basaccia took over in the interim and how it, it was a mistake to move on from him and find a different candidate. Yeah, you know, I was there at that time. And, um, you know, part of, a part of some of those conversations. And Rich Basaccia was, is an amazing man, amazing human being. He's one of the best guys you will meet in football. Um, and I, it was a tough decision for Mark Davis. I'm sure it was. But... Uh, it, it, there's so many variables that play a part and a role in how you choose a head coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, you want to take as much time as you can, talk to as many people as you can, and try and use your best discernment to pick the right person for you. We had this, we had um, Hall of Fame legend, Howie Long on the show, Raiders legend. And I was a little surprised because I was bringing up the Bill Belichick of it all, saying, that seems like a nice... He'd go in, he, you know, there's no GM there right now. Obviously, Bill would want control. And how he sort of steered me away from it being a good fit. He goes, we just did the Patriot way and it didn't work. And I said, well, the pa you did the Patriot diet Patriot way. You did Patriot way like coaching tree vibes, not the actual man who created the Patriot way. Like, I think that Bill would be a different bit of a vibe. Do you agree that maybe he's not the right fit? And if not... Is it someone like a Jim Harbaugh? Is it an Eric B. Enemy? Like, what's, what sort of person would fit with the Davis family? You have to find a Raider. And, you know, it's been said uh, for, for years that there are 31 franchises in this league and there's the Raiders. 31 <laughs> teams and the Raiders. It's just different. It's a different fit. It's a different feel. And um, whenever people ask me how you build a team, I always tell them it's not about the best 53 players. It's the right 53 players. And the same thing goes for a coach and a GM. You know, Bill Belichick will go down as one of the greatest coaches in the history of this league. But it doesn't mean he's the right fit. 
for the Raiders or any other organization besides the Patriots. And it's all about timing. So to Howie's point, Bill is not the guy to be in Las Vegas coaching the Raiders. But uh, I have confidence that Mark will find the right person. Give me the three qualities that make a Ra- that would make uh, a Raiders coach fit. What are we looking for? If I'm a recruiter. Ooh. When you're talking about a Raider, you're, you're really talking about a feeling. And it's really hard to articulate into words. It's something mm-hmm. someone who can command a room without ever saying a word. Antonio. Someone that you just... Um, that you gravitate towards, okay. someone that you gravitate towards, and someone that is that is loyal sometimes to a fault, but um, but it always works out in the end. Is it you? <laughs> no, nah, it's not me, Kay. It's not me. If you were the Raiders GM, what's the first thing you'd want to improve on that roster, personal wise? Ooh, that's a tough question. That's a tough question. But I honestly, what I would do is I would start. I would start in the trenches. I would start in the O line. I would start with the D line, and then I would work up. You know, when you're looking at the Raiders right now, you have Max Crosby, who is phenomenal and should probably be uh, in the top two or three for defensive player of the year. You have one of the best running backs in this league in Josh Jacobs, and you have the best receiver in this league in Devontae Adams. Now, you have foundational pieces. Those all, all those guys are leaders on the team, and they are dogs on the field. And then you just kind of work your way in from uh from those guys if you're the gm you got to look at linebacker you got to look at defense everyone tries to go with offense right now the young prodigy at coach and and these these uh these high level explosive playmakers mm-hmm. i would go opposite than a lot of these teams and work on defense and uh and then work let the offense catch up it's well said let's talk about a quarterback that you played with actually Derek carr um, his, you know, you played with him his first two seasons, I think, in the league. Now, he's had an up-and-down first year with the New Orleans Saints. Fans, very frustrated. Cam Jordan came on our show this week and said, I get why the fans are booing him. I understand why the fans are booing the entire team. We're not do- performing as well as we can with how talented we are. Here's how he's dealing with it. I remember the other day, my, my son was, true story, he's frustrated with his math homework. He's getting really upset at it. He won't even look at the page. I look, look, son, it's okay. I'm going to start booing you right now, too. You know, and he, he and it made him laugh. You know, I was like, it doesn't matter, buddy. Just focus and do your best, man. That's all you can do. Knocked his homework out, and it was just a great lesson for him. You know, it was a great lesson as a dad to be able to teach him. So, look, man, I, I love everybody, and I, I'm going to do my best this week to get everyone excited, complete all the passes I can complete, score all the points that we can score. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep giving everything that I physically can, everything mentally that I can. Uh, to do my best, and I know all of our team is doing that, um, but we got to give them some stuff to get excited about, uh, and we have in certain halves, you know, but we got to do it as a whole, uh, you know, so we can, you know, keep being positive and keep getting excited about all the fun stuff that we believe that we can do. It's been a rocky start for him. You know him. I like that answer. I just wanted to show it because I thought it was, it shows a lot about Derek Carr. Cam Jordan, like, totally shut me up on any sort of Jameis Shmamis. Like, they like Derek Carr. Do you agree, as the NFC South is still up for grabs, you got the Saints, you got the Bucks, you got the Falcons in a bit of a 6-7 and seven tie? Do agree. Listen, Derek, as you can see right there, is a, is a fantastic human being and a better father than, you know, most people can ever imagine or, or try to be. Mm. What, what a lot of people and fans don't understand but need to start understanding is it is hard to gain a rhythm in offensive football. Mm. And you're looking at your roster and saying we have great receivers, we have a good O-line, we have Alvin Kamara who has been one of the most explosive players in the last decade of football, and we have Derek Carr who had, who's had a ton of success at quarterback. Why are we not scoring points? Why are we not winning games? Well, it takes rhythm. It takes 11 guys working in unison to have successful offensive football. But when you're talking about the defensive side of the ball, you're just pouring gasoline on fire. It takes high energy to be a good defensive player and a great great defensive team. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about offense, it takes rhythm. It takes coordination. Everybody has to be working on the same page. And sometimes that takes time. And a lot of times, you have a little bit of false gold when you have, you know, those really good explosive plays, but it takes time to get that rhythm going. And I have full confidence that Derek Carr is going to get that team going. And why do you have full confidence? I mean, fans, fans who watch him are calling for James. And not even that, just Derek so banged up that people are thinking all of these injuries, like Jameis couldn't give a little more here, but I think it's, and it's sort of an indictment or it sort of shows you what, the belief they have in Derek over Jameis. I'm not saying there's a quarterback controversy, nor should there be, but why should people believe in Derek? 
Smith is a really good quarterback, but I'll say this before I answer your question. The backup quarterback is always the most popular guy in a city. If you're, especially if you're not winning games, <laughs> the backup quarterback is the most popular guy in the city, no matter take. what. Okay. So, and the reason why Jameis is happy because Jameis is watching a successful Derek Carr, you know, live through that adversity. I've, I, I'm confident in Derek because I've been in that, that huddle with him for three years straight and we had our ups and downs. But one thing you knew about Derek, he was going to be composed. And, and I, I texted him the other, the other week and I, I saw him lose his composure a little bit. And I just told him, mm. keep working. Keep working. Keep leading the way you know how to lead and playing the way you know how to play. And the cream always rises to the top. And I see spurts in that team and flashes of that team of being a great football team. And the fans of New Orleans are frustrated because they were dealing with uh, a season Drew Brees for so long. 100%. And the last thing they remember is just winning football and having the best offense in the league. Uh, and it's the, to the, your point, it's the consistency. But you had Sean, you had Drew, and then you yeah. had uh, – this isn't that right now. And they're rebuilding. you got to give a lot of credit to D.A. for taking that on his plate, you know, and yeah. trying to establish his own way while keeping that going. The consistency is the hardest thing to achieve in the NFL, and that's why, like, that, that's the taste in New Orleans' mouth of having Drew Brees, who was so special and tied to that city. It's and, a really great and, point about the backup quarterback. Great point. And a lot of, You're a so lot damn of good, Marcel. <laughs> You're so damn good on TV. <laughs> a lot of fans start to for, – they, they tend to forget – what it took for Drew and Sean Payton to get to where they were, to get to winning Super Bowls, 100%. to get to to get to being a perennial playoff team in the fight for the NFC division every single year. They forget those those growing pains that they had. And, um, you know, they'll forget about Derek Carr and Dennis Allen's growing pains in the next, you know, few months and year, depending on how this uh, this season ends up for them. Now, you're a University of Washington man. Uh, oh, dogs. Yes. So, Jake Browning, let's get to it. I think these, you know, look at this. They've got the helmet here. What has stood out to you the most from what he's been able to do with the Bengals over this past two weeks? The composure. When you're talking about a guy taking his first start in the NFL and he sits back there and he's standing in the pocket with full of confidence and picking and choosing, and knocking off every every defense that he mm -hmm. faces, it just reams of confidence. And that's and I'm a little biased about him being a husky and going to UW, but it speaks volumes when you go to a high level school and you play a ton of football and get that experience and you don't have that that um that fall off. I mean, you're talking about Joe Burrow, who is a top three quarterback in this league. They were in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. And then you have a guy taking his first start and you see no drop off. Yeah. It's and that, that, that just speaks to, to Jake's preparation. That's, that speaks to his confidence and his ability to be an NFL quarterback. And if we look at the schedule, I think they're going to the playoffs, Marcel. I do. You know what? I'm with you, Kay. Really? I think they're going to the playoffs too. Yes. I Let's think they're go. going to the playoffs. <laughs> All right, there's a playoff Bengals team. Are your Washington Huskies going to go in there and take care of business against Texas? What's up? Absolutely. <laughs> that game is going to have fireworks all over it. we got three of the best receivers in the nation on our team there. Okay. With uh, Jalen, Jalen, and Rome playing. And we're going to get probably the second best receiver core in the nation in Texas. You know, only to us. I think we have the Heisman Trophy winner. Obviously, he didn't win it, but he is the Heisman Trophy He's, winner. Our hearts, Michael Penix Jr. Heisman Trophy winner. I love that. <laughs> exactly. I think we go into uh, into New Orleans, and they're going to light up the scoreboard. But the great thing about this Washington team that I've watched all year is we've learned to win games in every fashion. Early in the year, we're putting up 40, 50 points a game. Don't look back. In the middle of the year. We have dog fights where we have to come back. Teams come back on us, mm. then we have to come back on them. Michael Penix Jr. had to lead this team, kept his composure throughout the season, throughout all games when they faced adversity. I mean, we've our defense had to step up and win games. We got a pick six to seal the game and win the game in, in Stanford. We got a last second field goal against uh, Washington, State to, Washington State to win the last Apple Cup this year. And uh, we had to beat a fantastic Oregon team twice this year. So I think this team is confident. They've won in every fashion they can, and uh, they're not blinking or scared of anybody. They're not blinking. Let's see that cigar again on the way out. Marcel Reese, he's just, he's going to light that up and say, and here comes my primetime uh, football pregame show. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adams.